Test? <laughs> That's not how we do things here. So let's take a look. We're looking at this. This is a uh, silver blue, so 2.9 gigabytes. We're going to be putting this on with the thumb drive. The first, like, man, I can't believe this is a real thing and it was affordable and I could just buy one was a thumb drive that was 128 megabytes. And they stayed around that size for a minute, for a while. You know, they were like, you know, 64 megs, 128 megs. And um, we didn't think anything of it because we were living in a future. You know, you've had 128 megs of rewritable storage on your keychain. This was insane. How many text files that was? How many JPEGs you could put in that? And, um, but they eventually got to the point. I don't, what, like just one gig, right? I think everybody at some point, go check in a drawer in your house. You'll have a one gigabyte sand disk drive for some reason. One of those little flip deals. I don't know why it's just there. Okay, we got Fedorf, we got Anaconda, and we got our partition, and then we got 61 gigabytes of free space. Is 2.9 really a thick ISO? Is that what we consider a thick ISO these days? I don't know. Maybe? Like, I, I consider a thick ISO like DVD size, right? Like around 4 gigs? But then again, you're talking to somebody who does, like, Debian net installs, so, you know, I consider, like, a regular size ISO, like, 300 megs, maybe, on a good day, possibly. I don't know. Let's see if we can be, uh... I ejected the disc. Look at look how professional that was. I would not do that unless we were, um, yeah, streaming. Yeah, I kind of skipped all the, um, I had that one gig SanDisk drive for way too long. By the time I get around to like buying another thumb drive after that SanDisk, uh, they were already, um, like silly cheap. What did I pay for a 64 gig Samsung thumb drive last year I don't know what like 10 bucks maybe $15 I don't know it was enough to where I have no idea what these cost I just bought them like yeah I'm gonna get one of those because it was that much now we gotta see because I've only um installed one operating system one time well i take that back what do we do we did twice on rectangle but everything else was just been restoring from images so let's uh let's see if we can figure this out i'm gonna plug this in let's see if we can get it to show up on uh let's see if we can figure out where the usb holes are on this thing Let's have a look. Uh... Oh, you know what? I don't think I connected the front USB panels on this thing. Damn it. <laughs> that just came crushing back to me. So we got to go around to the back, I think. Don't we? Because it's like, man, I'll never use the front USB panels on this thing. Or they wouldn't. There was some reason I didn't do it. I'm going to always default to laziness on this, though. That's the reason I didn't do it. Laziness. Let me go plug this into the back right quick. Okay, maybe I didn't plug in the USB 3 headers. Aha. There we go. Now we're in business. Look at that. Got it. Debian fights back. That's what we need. Adversarial um, Linux distributions that fight each other. Kind of like how Windows does when it sees... I don't know. How's Windows? I guess Windows and Linux play together reasonably well. I mean, it's probably been 20 years since I've messed with a, a bootloader that involved both of those systems. 
that's just a very fortunate situation. But yeah, for the longest time, Windows had no idea what it, it would just go scorched earth. It was like, I'm the only one here. I'm guessing things have gotten better. I just realized they've changed the look of Google Docs again. Lovely. Way to go, Google. I look forward to finding everything once again. That's editing suggestions. Normal text. Styles. Why? Why we change these things? Why? Oh, no. Why is there an option to join a call in Google Docs? Like, stop, Google. You're an advertising company. Quit trying to design. All right, let's see what happens. I'm the least bit of curious. And I don't have anything in the way of exotic hardware in this. Huh? The closest thing, it's not even exotic on Linux, it's not exotic at all. I have a 10 gig fiber card in it, but it's a uh, Connect X3 Mellanox, man. It's an NVIDIA fiber card. Hey, look at that. Uh, test. <laughs> it's not how we do things here. Okay, it looks like I've got to an installer. Now we got to do this thing, though. Um, because it's no fun if I can't uh, get you guys up. Aha, look at that. We have the technology. Uh, you know, I get, I get like all the um, angsty, ragey stuff for Windows out of my system, like way back when, you know, probably like in the 90s and early aughts. It's just a curiosity of operating system. I don't really consider it a... Uh, it's an end-user operating system. It's got all the sharp corners filed off, which is good. It's good for the type of people that want to run it. And it's to my detriment that I don't really understand it these days. Like, <laughs> all I get is with the last two times I've had to tango with like Windows uh, 10, even 8. 8, 10, and I've never touched 11. Um, all that results in is probably like a two-minute ragey monologue on Linux Gamecast weekly that following Saturday every time I have to touch it I'm just like this makes no sense mm. all right let's see how do we want to do this English what's going to be the easiest way to do this uh is this thing wireless yeah wait that's wireless Automatic partitioning selected. Is that good? My poor little brain immediately short circuits once I get more than one um, input device on the um, on my desk. Mm. You know, this is really pretty, though, isn't it? Advanced custom, BT Live GUI. No, we're, we're, I guess, uh, installation options. Your current Fedora has, uh, requires a Okay. Delete everything. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's what was throwing me off under the camera. All right. So I'm going to have to do it a little bit off. Mm. Begin.
What are we going to say about just the aesthetics of um, as somebody who basically just installs Debian and I'm done with it? Like, just looking at the aesthetics of this so far. Uh, very corporate feeling, isn't it? Like, that's not a bad thing. And I mean, I mean like, it, it feels very trusty. Like, oh, this, this is solid. Like, we got this figured out. Because, like, look at our circuit board leaf in the bottom left-hand side of the corner thing, man. It's like, if you can't trust that, who can you trust? They don't let non-trustworthy distributions fade from green to blue. On the installers, they don't. There's laws against this. It is writing objects, for whatever that means. Um, the mouse still jiggles. Really, that's all we can do. Okay, immediately, here's my first comment. Um, serious comment on the installer. Where's my big button that says, give me details? I'll like this. I've never liked this. With any installer, for anything. I want a console where I can see things moving, where I can see progress taking place. Because right now, I genuinely don't know. Are you writing objects or are you frozen? And I'm coming up working on um, PCs in some way, shape, form, or fashion for 30 years. My first thought is like, well, it's crashed. It's frozen. What's the easiest way for the end user to find out? Oh, look at this. Look at this, fools. Check this out. It's still going. Now it's installing runtimes. Never mind. Never mind. We were all fooled. We, we were all deceived for they created another ring. Or another progress screen. This is going to take a minute. I didn't prepare any stories. Uh, it says it's complete. Let's reboot. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's got a little blinky thing in the upper left-hand corner, so it's thinking about doing something. How dare you con conf accuse containers of being slow, Pedro? That is uncalled for. That is uncalled for. Here's, you're spreading FUD. <laughs> Squash FX. It's like, man. Uh, error. Failed to read block. All right. Reboot number one. That's a lot more fancy than the last time, wasn't it? Welcome to Fedora 37. Start set. All right. The hell just happened there, right? What just happened? It... Is that a, is this a normal thing? I know we got some redhead people watching. <laughs> do, do we just let it, that just X not show up or something? I don't know, man. Well, I'm assuming this is probably not using X, is it? Uh, no location services, no. Yes. Third-party repos. Uh, that's how you make a um, Linux distribution. What's the word I'm looking for? Work. Yes. About me. Um, uh, sure. I've, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I've used GNOME. That's why we're going to be installing a real desktop manager on this. XFCE. You know. Start the tour. Learn about let's, let's learn about some key features in uh, Fedora Analytics. Uh, connection failed. That's right. Out of the gate, doesn't know what to do with a 10 gig fiber card. So we're gonna have to figure that out. Uh, overview. Type to search, which I find absolutely like bad design. Bad design. This is like two two windows for me, man. It is. Uh, 
because I, I I've definitely asked uh, Pedro uh, Pedro more than Jordan about it because Pedro loves Windows so much. He works with it. Um, it's like when you go to launch something, it's like no, just type it out every single time that you want to launch it. I'm like that's stupid. That's an egregious waste of time and energy. Also, what if you don't know the name of the thing you need? He's like, no, it's the future of design. Ven, shut up. You're old and don't understand things. I death protest. Workspaces, up, down, whatever. That's it. All right, that's cool. Uh, how do we get to network? You gotta use three fingers, man. That's that's uh. Uh, how do I, seriously? How do I get to network activities? Are you networks? No. Hey, all right. Wired. Wait. Wired settings. It's trying to connect at ten gigachumps. All right. Um, did not cut NumLock on automatically, which is a criminal offense in like seven countries. All right. Uh, 192.168.88.1. DNS. Routes? I don't know, sure. Um, hot quarter? Are we online? Ah, fuck. There we go. What? Hey, that, that wasn't too slow, was it? Okay, where the hell are the minimize and maximize buttons? 100% serious question. Is it this drop down thing? No, that's tabs because we need it needs to show me I have tabs in this drop down thing and here on the tab thing because I might forget when I'm over here. I'm like, what's this button do? And it's like, hey. Is that it? I just double click. Okay. So, and okay, so GNOME just wants me to like take longer to maximize by clicking on things twice. Got it. Got it. Yeah, this GNOME's pretty dope, guys. Right click should give me the option as well. To do what? Can I customize? Oh, that's the toolbar. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like that. Like that, that should just be a button like here, preferably. It would make sense because it's not like we're against buttons, gnome. You got a close button. But hey, no screen tearing, right? I'm sure it looks pretty good. Other workspaces? Okay. And gnome, you usually leave everything maximized and go to a new workspace? How is that? All right. Okay. 
Like, I, I have no rebuttal for that other than, okay. Yeah, it sounds like Gnome's all about wasting the shit out of your time. It's like, how many extra steps can we put into being efficient? Um... Everybody I know who uses Gnome and loves Gnome complains about Gnome more than I do. So I don't want to hear it. I'm not even complaining about Gnome. I'm just giving you a reaction. I'm, I'm never going to use Gnome. And it's not out of anger or anything. I, you know, you use the desktop manager that you like. It's about Linux. It's all about choice. People call it fragmentation. That's wrong. We got options. And options means we can all be proficient and productive in our own individual ways using the tools that we like. Welcome to Linux, ladies and gentlemen, where we're not all forced to use, like this GNOME thing. I'm like, uh-uh. I'm not, not boo-booing all over GNOME. But, but, all right, so, I want to install Steam. How do I close this? Um, activities? T E R. All right. I was looking for a way to make that bigger. <laughs> it did nothing. It just ignored all that. First thing I should do. I don't know how to do that. I'm a new user. This is my first Linux install. It's telling me to type this moon glyphs in the uh, terminal. Man, I don't know. I, I want to um, install Steam. Oh, man. It didn't work, you guys. What do we do? Beastwick, you said open a new terminal. Like, logically, I thought to myself, you know what? Let's just uh, click on that. We'll open a new terminal. It's like, nope. Just that one. New window. So how do we... I mean, I guess you guys can read that at home. I would prefer that it be a little bit bigger, but still. You get the idea. Software center, huh? Hmm. Is that software? Okay. Um, going to be real? Going to be honest? The uh, editor's choice is a little thin. A little bit thin. Let's see what's installed. All right. Not see anything installed. And uh, updates. All right. Cannot create temporary file. Nice. All right. Pretty dope. Crushing it. Oh, check this out. Now, I want everybody to keep in mind, Silver Blue is, uh, it's flat packs all the way down, baby. And it's experimental, so you're going to run into stuff like this. You're like, check this out, try this, and it is just going to roll over and burst into a little ball of fire. And you're like, that's cool, we're learning. 
Um, I don't know. Hello, Arthurin. So we want to play though. We want Steam. We're here for Steam. This is this is it. And this is like whether or not. This succeeds as a distribution is how long it takes me to install Steam, because guess what? I don't care. Even if you don't game, you, you want to install Steam. Where do I where do I do a search? Am I just not seeing the uh... I know for a fact Steam's in a flat pack? What do I gotta do? Where's Steam? Why is Steam not at the very top here? Like where is the big giant button of like I'm only here to install Steam? Why is this not here? Why are we pretending I want to play any of this stuff? I'm making some people mad, but I'm being real. I'm being real. Yes, I did. Yes, I did, Synthetic Owl. I absolutely did. A hundred percent. Burr. How do I run an update then? Well, a couple of things. Synthetic Tree Control Up Plus doesn't embiggen anything and uh, unknown command check. So. No scroll wheel on the mouse. Just plus? Control plus? No. Okay, now we've dialed it down to um, that command's not good. Facebook, this is why this is a good stream. This was a brilliant idea. People didn't realize how much fun this was going to be. Yeah, this is Twitch plays fucking uh, Fedora of Silver Blue. This is what this is going to turn into because I don't. I genuinely have not touched this. And we got Synthetic Al here just throwing stuff out, and it's like, here, try this now. This was like uh, when I was uh, trying to get the Raspberry Pi up and running uh, to boot from the uh, USB drive. I had uh, I think four competing people copying and pasting stuff from the internet. It was adorable. Well, it didn't immediately error out, did it? Let's get that going for it. <laughs> That's old school, man. You want to feel like you're running a 5400 RPM drive instead of an NVMe? I guess I'll just Google how to install Steam, because that's what I'm here to do.
Okay. So we just go to flatpack.org maybe? Which is apparently being hosted in Mordor. with this go away quit stay in search right. science technology engineering alphabets uh, this one all right now I'm gonna go out on a very um, short stout limb and say that this should work being silver blue right <laughs> You would be wrong. That did not work. So I'm thinking here I am. I'm a new user. I've installed. I reasonably intelligent. I've installed the ISO. I got silver blue up and running and I'm I'm going to do a Google search, you know, I'm like, Hey man, I'm here to install steam. I got to get steam up and running. And so I'm, I'm going to go over to Fedora magazine and Fedora magazine's like, Hey man, uh, do it this way. So do you think maybe the flat hub Revo is just not installed? The real flat? No, not the fake one. Not a uh, flat hub.org.cx.org.io. I thought that was the real one. Good for basic things. Okay, we've added the flathub.org repo now. Okay. Browse apps. Did you open another tab? No. All right. So we know I want Steam. Is there no integration with Firefox out of the gate with FlatHub.org? Is this? Uh, am I feeling this correctly? Is Vinstone going to have to go to a command line to install Steam after having to go to a command line to enable the, um...
Oh, that that that's really dope. Firefox is not set to automatically stay from more than where you left off. Neat. Okay, we're going on um, Beastwick's suggestions. Go to the bottom of the page. That's the first place you go, right? Like when you get ready to install Steam, you're like, all right, yeah, instructions, at the bottom of the page. What do I do with it? Do, 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 just uh, save them as a web page? Like, no, 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 no. Get to run them in terminal. Yes. Y sure. Why is Flathub being so slow? That's what I thought. I got this thing limited to uh, three megabits. Let me crack open uh, the router Tron and I'm just going to disable the uh, queue list. Uh, we give it all the bandwidth that it can handle and see how much it can, how much does it want. Let's go on. It's going. It's installing four of nine things. And I'm going to have to go out on a limb and hope that one of them is going to be um, Steam. I mean, 88 terabytes a day is a rounding error in 2023. I mean, no offense, but that's not a lot of bandwidth. All right. So am I to assume that we now have Steam installed? What's up with this background too? Like, I'm getting like some uh, DBZ buildings. Like I, I expect, like you know, a Piccolo or somebody in that art style to be in the background somewhere. Actions. No, I just want a menu. Are you a menu? Yeah. All right. Steam input devices that you don't seem to be installed. If you experience issues with gamepads, consider installing Steam devices packages. Why is that not automatically installed? Hmm? Why is it not automatically installed? I need took the time to give me a warning message, so you might as well just take the time to automatically install that. I'm just saying. I'm gonna say good job on the green check marks, though. Like, 
That's pretty fancy. And again, like at the end of the day, I spent all my day in the terminal. Like I like the GUI thing. Like the idea of changing the wallpaper. I like I like that comment. That's pretty dope because the only thing I would change the wallpaper to is nothing. You've all seen my desktop. I don't have any shame. All right. Um, so let me do the... What do I got to do? Twitch sunbox? Uh, one of these is orange square. Black color, no problem. Yeah, like I, I don't look at my desktop. All right. <laughs> Let me log in. using the Steam app. So you guys have about 15 minutes because it takes about 15 minutes to open the Steam app on this uh, Amazon tablet. I genuinely disable wallpaper because I come from a time so long ago that that what made a noticeable difference in performance. Like it just did. I mean, it doesn't today. It's all a rounding error, but that's how we got in this mess. That's how we got in the mess we're in today. Really, you know, it, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's that's why you. That's why you have to run a web browser for your chat program, Discord. That's how we got here. That kind of thinking. So what do I do? I visit the shield. Steam guard. Scan a Steam QR code to sign in. All right. Yeah. Now you just sit back and wait, man. Background activity. Steam is running in the background. Hey, how long did that take? I mean, you just, you just wait, and eventually it comes up. I learned that the hard way. I thought it didn't work at first. How old am I? I'm in my 40s, Synthetic Owl. I'm ancient. I'm a creature of the long, long ago. Do, I'm sorry, what was that Facebook? Do I only own Half-Life? What? Half -Life? What are you talking about? G. I have Half-Life. I have Half-Life 2 Deathmatch. I have Half-Life Deathmatch Source. I have Half-Life Opposing Force. But I'm out of Half-Life. Process some Vulcan shaders. Uh, 
There we go. See, it wasn't too, so bad, was it? So time to Half-Life is now, I mean, we, we're going to have to come up with a... Um, We're speed running Half Life, kids. This is a new thing that I've come up with. How long it takes to get into Half Life One? To hear that first turn from Valve. So we're we're gonna have to come through with the um, you know, the, how they have these speed run timers, segment timers. We're gonna have to be able to. We're gonna have to go back and check the frames on the recording to see uh, how long it took to run to get into Half-Life from the initial boot with a thumb drive. Because that is the only true measure of a distribution's usability and or performance. So I think it matters. Everything else is just fluff. It is a, how long does it take to get Steam installed and uh, get on the tram? Well, I mean, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. I try to approach things as, uh, as in a most, the most infuriating way possible. Because if you're somebody like me or somebody like yourself, we just take things for absolute granted i'm like of course you just you know, we're just gonna crack open a terminal we're gonna run that we're gonna do that but you try to put yourself in the perspective of somebody's like just they they just took the plunge it's like i've this is the first time i've installed an operating system what's terminal wait you mean like command prompt so we got that so what do we need to do now uh now we are going to install um we're going to try to set up XFCE4 on Fedora Silverblue. And if I get that done, I'm doing a victory lap and uh, we're calling it a day. Because we absolutely have a Half Life running. Whoop. Did that close or. Alt Tab is showing me all my running applications, right? I'm assuming. Stalling Jack and Outdoor. No. <laughs> no. Here's a, here's exactly where I'm at. Um, I think it, it's why I wanted to play with this. This has been way less painful than I expected it to be. But we need to see if we can get an actual desktop manager up and running. I mean, it's, this is a cool like tech demo tinker toy. But we need to see if we get a real desktop. Where's this guy's project at? Is that it? Was that it? Did I just blow by it? That's LXQT. Ugh. I don't know about that. That's all right. Where is the link to the damn thing? I put it in our Discord. I think in show suggestions, maybe? Let me go check. Um... GitHub, Penguin Eggs, Raspberry Pi stuff. Is that it? Immutable Fedora based XFC desktop. Yeah, baby. There it is. All right. Mmm. 
I think you were there. You beat me. I was in the live show scrolling up, man. Um, not live show. Uh, show suggestions. So this is what we got to do. And we can rebase on Voxite. New images are built daily to update to the latest diff run. All right. Um, I'm team. I don't want to type all that out. Ah, damn it, Bobby. Why did you move like that? What's this thing called? So there's no minimize button. There's a close button. There's no minimize button. I just realized that then we don't get them. How do you people use no? How? Like, what do you? The hell? This is like a bad practical joke, man. Like, seriously? Oh, and apparently Half-Life was still running this entire time. It because it didn't show up as it was still running. Smooth. Ah, oh, man. Then you got to go back and realize that you use Paradigm non-ironically and cry a little bit. What was wrong with the old workspace? Well, nothing. We, we just thought we would move things around and change stuff. Make it, put some extra steps in it, man. It's wishy though. So it's the future. Let's just go with tile-based everything. Why is this thing taking so long? He says that like I have any idea how long it's supposed to take, which I don't. Auto full screen ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, if I wanted a Mac, I'd buy a Mac. I kind of want a Mac, but I want like one of the new Macs, right? I want one of the old new Macs. I want like just the original M1. Hey, is this thing done? Oh man, it's ready. Wait. System CTL reboot? Is that all I gotta do? All right. workspaces yeah you know if i want things to always be open in the background full screen I, I pick up my android device because like that's how that works mm. that's a yolo okay by the way this is the worst keyboard this is the keyboard that like um comes with old business computers, you know, the, the mouse and keyboard package that they pack in, and it is that membrane keyboard that is so mushy it's impossible to type on. Like, I, I want to share the experience with other people. Let's go. I think GNOME works perfectly for people who have no idea how uh, a desktop should function. I, I don't think it, enough people have sat back and just like the learning curve. Because I guarantee you, I can get somebody up and running with XFC quicker than you can with GNOME. I'll take that Pepsi challenge. I do that. 
And not even XFCE, like KDE, probably. I think KDE. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I gotta restart it. I gotta restart it. Why? Just, just to make sure Pedro is watching. So we could have just left this alone. We could have left this as a joke. But my lovely co-host weren't gonna let me have it. Well, you know what? Now, now it's a real thing. Don't show me this again. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the pinnacle of desktops. This is it. Just call it done. Uh, yeah. I use CD, uh, paid, bought. You had to buy CD by, CDE back in the day for Linux anyway, and I used to buy that because I was familiar with it. Like. We, we got this figured out. This is like trying to reinvent the start menu. You know, Windows 95, you know what? Microsoft figured that shit out. It, as in perfect? No, but have you improved upon it, really? No. Like some, some things you, you get right at some point in evolution, and then you're just dicking around with stuff. You leave a bunch of designers in a room, what are they going to do? They're going to design stuff. Because that, that's the way of the world, man. Um, and even with XFCE, I immediately, if I was going to use this for any amount of time, I'd change all this. I, I don't, I'm, I don't like the default layout. My default layout on XFCE is a CDE use layout. So internet, uh, connections, Firefox, Steam. Do I have a home folder? No. Hey, Dorf. Come on, Steam. Um... This is something that infuriates me that uh, XFCE does out of the box now is it groups Windows. And it's not immediately obvious how to remove that feature. You know, what, do, what does grouping Windows really do? It adds an extra step to getting to the window that you need to. So, ah, uh, finally a ruler. So how do I install HTOP, like, easily now? Or is that built in? Oh, IBM, I was going to give you bonus points if you installed HTOP by default, but no. No bonus, no bonus points for you, Big Blue. I can't just type in, like, DNF, right? That's not going to work. No? I don't, yeah, I don't give a... Flying delete expletive about top. I need something useful like H top.
Okay, look at it. It found my Renoir. I'm supposed to use toolbox. How do I get the toolbox? Where's toolbox located? Did I kind of just type in toolbox? This is wants me to make a new container. So like seriously to install stuff in, uh, in silver blue land, like my command is RPM dash OS tree. Every time I want to install something. You could do it, I have faith. No, admittedly, this is only a 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5600G running at 4.2 gigahertz, so things take a second. We're installing HTOP. And I, th I think it just told me I need to reboot in order to use HTAP. Oh, I have to reboot in order to use it? Wait, so you, you, if you install an application, a system application, you have to reboot. For every package installed? Wait, wait, I didn't have to do that with Steam, did I? We don't have to reboot after we installed Steam, so what the hell? Or is it that I can just install user packages uh, I don't have to worry about, but anytime I do a system package. Flatpak, Flatpak. So what I installed was, wait, Okay, flat pack and installation home. So what I installed just then was not a flat pack. Yeah, this is, this is what I, I'm being, I, I'm hundred percent curious about. Uh, Uh-huh. So uh, what I'm asking is, was the package I installed not a flat pack? An actual system change? Uh-huh. Was it or was it not a flat pack? We'll get to the answer to this question one day, ladies and gentlemen. I have faith in each and every one of the people watching. It was not a flat pack. So Silver Blue is not made 100% out of flat packs. There's an asterisk on that. It's going to say Fedora Silver Blue, all flat packs, asterisk. Unless your bitch ass tries to install HTOP, then it's not. Is that what it says? And they like fine print down at the bottom?
So the main takeaway from this, for those of you sitting back and watching, is this a very long roundabout way of saying, I'm looking at the wrong camera to have it, um, is user level stuff that you're going to be installing with Fedora Silverblue using Flatpak, preferably FlatHub, which should have been working just out of the box and integrated properly with Firefox, but it wasn't. Um, all of that's going to be fine. You just install, uninstall like you normally would. Anytime you make a system change, a system application, even something like HDOP, which makes perfect sense, a system application. You're going to have to give it the old reboot. Let's give it the reboot. Can I just tell it to reboot now? Hey. Well, Justin, most of that's because you run Windows, bro. Like, that's cool. Don't nobody judge you? And the RPM OS tree, it's get file system requires reboot. Now the thing, the big takeaway from that is average person ain't gonna know that. Hell, the average person's probably gonna be in the console to try to install something. Is there a notification? Ooh, here's something I wanna test, right? I immediately wanna to go to the terminal, but we don't go to the terminal. What is the name of the um, graphical um, store package thing. Software Center? How do I launch that? Oh yeah, done. I mean, XFC doesn't have the uh, GNOME Software Center built into it because it's not GNOME. Uh, usually it would pick that up. I was wondering what the command line is to launch it. Well, I mean, it should have the equivalent of, like, software and updates. I mean, you think? I mean, I can Google it. Jeez, guys, I was trying to give you guys a little something to do. Um, command line and the GUI based software installer. How do I launch that though? There's nothing in the terminal, my man. And something that you can do when you're in Synthel is just full screen the video and you'll be able to see it. Type in gnome dash tab. Yeah, autocomplete. <laughs> I 
That's worth a shot, right? Hey, we got Fedora Meteor Writer installed by default. That's pretty neat. Disk usage, office. Let's see if we can switch it back over to a uh, no. Yep. It's not too bad, but 840 megs. Is it software dash center? You know what? At this point, I don't even remember why we would be trying to get to the software center. What we're, what we're gonna do? We we're gonna check something. I don't know. I think it all in all, I mean, it's relatively painless to get set up. I know for me, like. <laughs> Flatpak stuff. I don't know. Like for the end user, I don't think the like. You no, know, out of the box, the uh, software center not working. That was that was kind of a big thing. And what happens if we do like? Uh, IoT, I'm just reading about this desktop. Um, new images are built daily. Update to the latest diff. Um, Podman. RPMO, Street Podman Toolbox. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Some numb flat packs left over from Silver Blend Stellar don't work properly. I'm reading through the issues right now. Oh, well, we got Steam up and running. Hey. So getting to Steam, that wasn't terribly bad. And I guess if you hate yourself enough to continue using GNOME, like most people are just going to use whatever you put in front of them. Now. They don't have preferences on that. And I don't think there's anything else left to uh, look at. Is there? Power manager. Um. Yeah. I just think about like the average user. When you start, when you think about your average Linux user, you're, you're dealing with somebody that's got the uh, intestinal fortitude, the gusto to install Linux, to install a new operating system on the perfectly working box because you're curious. They got that spark of curiosity, a spark that we've a lot of us have lost over the years. But uh, things weren't good enough, or you know what? Maybe 
maybe you needed to know how this other thing will work, you know? That that doesn't set well with a lot of people. A lot of people aren't content with like, oh yeah, Windows, or just like, oh yeah, I got, I got a Mac, and it just works, and that's good. That's all, all that's right with the world. Some of us look over at this other thing and go, wait a minute. What the hell's that? How does that work? I want to play with that. How do I play with that? How do we go about doing this? Okay, we got to learn how to do this. And that's not a Linux thing. You know, you can do that with Linux. You can do that with like, with me, it's been a bunch of stuff, you know, automotive, welding, you know, smelting. Just, I look at them like, how does that work? Oh, I, I want to learn how to do that. And you find yourself there. Um, the biggest problem with like silver blue, like silver blue A is experimental. If, um, don't install this for people <laughs> for multiple reasons, like, let them don't, don't experiment on the in average end users. Okay. Maybe, maybe keep that in mind. Don't do that. If you do. Uh, don't tell anybody about it. The biggest problem with like uh, silver blue is with a lot of stuff is adoption. People, that's uh, that's the real thing. Because if somebody calls me up and they're like, "Hey, I got a problem with my Linux," and I'm like, "Oh, what's the problem?" Da, 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 and I'm like, "Wait a minute, you're running silver blue?" I'm like, "Yeah." It's like, "Good luck with that." Click, and they get really confused because I say "click" before I hang up on them in Discord. I go "click," then I disconnect the call, just just so they know I'm serious. Well, I mean, if you got boxes that you're maintaining for others that you're not teaching the end users how to use, man, like, what? <laughs> ah, so it's like Windows, you just take it up back and shoot it and reformat it? Well, what type of users are we talking about? Are we talking about like your friend next door or do you have like a client base you're serving? Because that's a two different, completely two different conversations, my man. Because when the conversation gets down to like, what does this person need? Oh, they need a web browser. All right. But Netflix. All right. Maybe some Netflix. Okay. What do they need? Google Docs. So they got Google Docs. All right. Boom. You know how you end up with a Chromebook? That's how you end up with a Chromebook right there. Because guess what? You got a problem with it. Power wash it. Done. I'm not wrong. This is for some reason, man. Like Chromebook's got some, got some funk to him. I'm like, oh, I don't want to use a Chromebook. I think it. Dude, I use an Android tablet. It's my main driver. 99% of my computing is done on an Android tablet. I don't even use a laptop. Yeah, Chromebooks. Chromebooks are great. Uh, or get, them, get, get somebody a... Uh, 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 Get him a tablet-like device. Get him an um, iTab Pro Apple with a keyboard. Like, here you go. Done. I think Chromebooks are more computer than most people need. This is this is why we got to get out of our bubble from time to time. You got to pop your head outside of our little sphere of not just Linux, uh, but just IT in general. And get out and go hang out with your mechanic friends or your lawyer friends or your doctor friends, uh, musician friends, and see what see what they use computers for. If they have computers, like look around the house and like, no, nobody has desktops anymore. Nobody. Like, they might have a laptop. Usually, it's just a mobile device. They might have a tablet near the TV. 
That's the average person. I mean, that's something I figured out. And again, it's, it's which like my 10 inch Galaxy uh, Samsung S6. Like, that's way more compute power than I need to carry around with me 24 7. But I do. Like, it's there. So, did we get anything else? Oh, did this thing time out? I guess that's good. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to try. We were able to do everything I wanted to do. We um, got silver blue. It was a little rocky getting it up installed because it just straight up sit with an error message and we were getting ready to try to install it again and it decided to boot. Oh, let's do a complete power off. Cool. This is also a dumb thing. An experiment with Nmap? Uh, probably not. I mean, you can ask. It never hurts to ask, but I'm not going to tell you I'm going to do something until I see what the uh, which thoughts are. Let's bring this guy up. One last time. It's got one kibs, one mice, one mass, zero mass, and two hoobs. You know what? It boots really quick from a cold boot. Like, that's not bad at all. Is, well, I'll tell you what, if in map is installed, we can run it. How about that? Nope. So that would require... This is a ridiculous part for me, though. This is why it, I don't think it makes necessarily a good... Uh... <sighs> then again, is it that bad? Am I that impatient? I'm just thinking about how many times I need like that one little program when I'm working on something. I'm like, oh, I need that real quick. See, synthetic L, you're like way out in left field with me. I don't know what toolbox is. Permanent Docker like thing. Yeah. Uh, 
that. Where are you? Dot six? Uh, no, dot five. I net dot five twenty four. It didn't crash. Latency is pretty good. Can I try with the domain name? Uh, sure. fun. It ran. I can map it. No crashes. Ah, have you tried installing it without using Toolbox? Might I suggest that? Oh, you silly tablet. You know, this was a great tablet for back in the day. For what it cost, let me just say that. Is it as good as my ne Nexus tablets? No, but is it anywhere near as good as like a Samsung any tablet? No, but for what, like 120 bucks? As long as you didn't mind taking the time to um, install uh, actual Android on it. I still have my Nexus 10, my OG Nexus 10. That was the uh, last piece of Google hardware that I ever bought because I bought it and like a year and a half later they canceled support for it. Why did I buy? Why did I get a Nexus 10 from Google? Because I'm like, listen, I want a really nice tablet. And if I'm going to spend half a grand on a tablet, I need people to support it. So Google, there's no way Google's going to drop support for their flagship tablet. It was like 550, 560 bucks, and they did a year later. They're like, nope, don't care. You know what? You know what? You deserve what you get if you get a thousand dollar pixel book, don't you? Like every every last little thing that you receive as a response to spending a thousand dollars on a Chromebook, like that's on you. All right. I can't think of Zidi, anybody got any thoughts, ideas before we wrap this up? Because it's already five o'clock. I gotta reimage this box, put a real operating system back on it. Is there any applications, games, anything we should try in Fedorf Silver Lube before we call it a day? Lutris? I don't, I don't think Lutris is in a flat pook, is it? Where is this thing saving to? I have questions now. I might be about to run out of space. Oh, dump Trek Mania. All right, that's in the Trek PQ. Oh, that's not too bad. This is only 200 gig file. Pfft, I was worried there for a minute.
RPM OS tree status. Oh, Pedro's got the song in the background. Pedro's not gonna let somebody play around without uh, play around with Fedorf without silently judging. Um, Lutris Flatpak. Third time. Third time is it showed me this when I've started up Firefox. Skip. Skip. Alright. Yeah, what was it? Um, out of curiosity, I was setting up uh, Steam uh, with Flatpak, with the NVIDIA drivers and Flatpak. Yeah, just out of curiosity on Debian. Uh, this was like last year. I was like, okay, well, let me install this. No, it was something abstractly large. It was a couple of gigabytes with all the dependencies. It's good to see things haven't changed. Couple of hundred megs to download and install a glorified Python script with a GUI. Seems good. Enjoy your work, Justin, as we all do. Yeah, I'm gonna have to investigate food options. I gotta take apart a PlayStation controller. That is uh, this afternoon's uh, project is taking this guy apart and cleaning the uh, square button. Hey, it's done. Boop, Tris. Yeah. That's painless. That's a DS4. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be too big of an issue. In the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> but yeah. There we go. That is a uh, Fedorf Silver Luba. Stable, mind you. This is not the uh, unstable. And uh, pass or fail, what do I think about it? I mean, it works better than I thought it was going to work. I mean, I had some weird stuff, as uh, you would expect. But overall, if you were wanting to play around with it, I mean, could you use it as a daily driver? I don't know, maybe. It's like a daily driver with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. 